Sonen Core, Tesla Powerwall 2. Which is the best home backup battery for your solar system? We're going to be answering that question and much, much more in today's video. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge. And for the past eight years, I've been helping families get their household set up to survive a loss of the electric grid. And of course, in most cases, we're doing that with a renewable energy, solar power, and battery backup system. Now, I'm a licensed electrician myself, and in the past, I've installed many of these different solar battery systems. And today, I'm excited to be bringing you a head-to-head -head comparison between the brand new Zonin Core battery and the market leading, or at least market leading in terms of popularity, Tesla Powerwall 2. Now, before we do the comparison, I, first I'd like to give you a little bit of background on these two products and talk about some of the things that they have in common before we do the side-by-side uh, -side comparison. Sonen, of course, is a, a European company. They were founded in Germany, and they did most of the residential battery um, rollout, their initial rollout in Europe. At the same time, Tesla was, uh, I wouldn't say beta testing, but they were doing a limited rollout of their version one home battery, the Tesla Powerwall One, uh, largely in Australia. And so both of these companies sort of had an opportunity to uh, get their feet wet and work out a lot of those version 1.0 bugs and kinks uh, in the, the international markets. In the case of Zonin, mostly Europe and Germany. In the case of Tesla, mostly Australia. And so what we're seeing now is basically the second generation, or in the case of Zonin, the third generation evolution of their battery storage product uh, that is now going to be available for wide uh, nationwide distribution here in the United States. So in terms of what they have in common, both of these batteries are AC coupled batteries, which means that they input and they output AC electricity and the coupling between the battery and the inverter happens internally inside the appliance. So as far as any power sources that it, it accepts in, or any power sources that it, that it provides to the house is going to be in an AC format. Uh, and the nice thing about the AC coupling is that it, it, it makes for a much more interoperability. So for example, if you have a home that has an existing solar power system with an existing grid tie inverter or micro inverters, you can connect an AC coupled battery to that system and pretty much all the work can be done at ground level. You don't have to rewire the roof or the existing grid tie inverter all that integration can be done at ground level. Now, the other thing is that these inverters are stackable. Um, stackable basically just means they can be parallel connected, multiple units together. And whenever you do that, you increase both your power output in terms of peak power and your energy storage capacity. So it gives you some ability to expand here. Uh, both batteries can also be used for both the emergency backup application which is mostly what we're focused on here at Solar Surge is how do you protect the home from a loss of the power grid. But I also know that many of you watching this video are going to be looking at the time of use offset application. So this is where in certain markets you can purchase power cheaply during off-peak hours, typically in the middle of the night. You can purchase power cheaply to charge your battery then and then use the battery during the daytime during on-peak hours if your solar can't provide all the load that you need, you might want to drain from the battery to avoid having to purchase from the utility company during peak hours. So both of these battery products are going to offer all of these different uh, use cases for you. Okay, we're going to be doing the evaluation in five different categories with a five points maximum per category for a total possible score of 25 points. Those categories are power, looking at both continuous load power as well as peak surge power for motor starting. We're going to be looking at energy storage capacity. We're going to be looking at the length and the conditions of the warranty. Uh, of course, the, the cost of the product and the cost to get that product installed for you. And then finally, what I call the X factor. Uh, and what the X factor is, is it's a way that we can award points to each product for unique design features that, that might be unique to that product where there isn't a clean one-to-one -one comparison, but where it could have tremendous impact for you as a potential system owner or for the installer that's uh, getting you set up with it. So let's jump into the comparison. 
Okay, let's go ahead and start with the Zonin Core battery. Now the Zonin battery has a continuous power rating of 4.8 kilowatts and surge power up to 8.6 kilowatts. Now that's a pretty good uh, power budget in terms of residential backup. Uh, if you live in a typical um, urban or suburban home where you're, you're hooked up to public utilities for your water and sewer, then typically uh, that 4.6 uh, 4, 4 kilowatts is going to be able to run all of your other critical systems in the home, whether that's going to be your refrigerator, uh, your home office, TV, internet, uh, your bedrooms, your wall outlets. Uh, you can even run your microwave uh, with a power budget like that. Um, where you're going to feel a little bit underpowered, though, is if you're trying to start up large motors, like uh, a central air conditioning compressors, for example. Uh, or if you're in a, in a rural area and you need to run uh, water pumps and septic pumps, where you have those, those startup surges uh, to, uh, you know, that, that have to be uh, supplied, that's where you might find it a little bit underpowered for you. But for your typical uh, urban, suburban home, where, where you're hooked up to utilities for your water and sewer, that's going to be an adequate power budget to power all of your uh, standard 120 volt uh, appliances. In terms of energy storage capacity, uh, the Zonin Core battery provides 10 kilowatt hours of energy storage. Uh, that's slightly less than the Tesla Powerwall 2, but in most cases, uh, again, if you're just running your critical systems uh, in a suburban or urban environment, that'll be enough to keep you running for 18 to 24 hours uh, on your critical systems. And then, of course, the solar, whenever you have solar coming in, the solar can replenish the battery. Uh, in terms of warranty, the Zone and Core battery actually offers the best in-class warranty at 10 years and 10,000 cycles. Now, when we talk about cycles, we're talking about if you discharge the battery, drain it down, and then you recharge it, that's one cycle. So with the Zone and Core battery, they're going to give you up to 12 years and up to 10,000 cycles, which is uh, better than any other product that I know of on the market, including Tesla, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Uh, so if you're using the battery for time of use offset, where you're going to be pretty much cycling that battery every day to, to buy cheap and then and then consume during peak hours, that 10,000 cycle life is really going to come in handy. In terms of the cost of the battery, if you're looking at just the cost of the hardware, uh, the, the Zonin Core battery and Tesla Powerwall 2 are right, right on par with each other in terms of equipment cost. Uh, however, and I'll talk about this more in the X-Factor uh, section, but but because the Zonin Core battery is much lighter and modular, uh, it takes fewer people to install it, which means the installation cost could be significantly reduced, maybe even 50% less uh, on the installation cost. So um, I, I believe that the product scores very, very well uh, in that area. And then in terms of X Factor, I want to touch on two additional, uh, two additional items. Um, we talked first about the power rating of the, 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 the Zonin Core battery itself. How much power can it provide to loads within the house? The other power rating that we need to be aware of is how much power can it accept as input from an existing solar PV system. And in the case of the Zonin Core battery, you can couple max 6 kilowatts of uh, AC from a solar PV system. So if you have a, a 6 kilowatt grid tie inverter or smaller, then it'll be okay to couple with one of the zone and core batteries. Uh, Tesla actually has a slightly higher rating there, and we'll, we'll talk about that in the next, uh, the next section. Um, the other thing, like I said uh, just a moment ago, is that the zone and core battery is a modular battery. So what you're looking at here is actually the, the outer enclosure, and then inside this enclosure you have individual battery cells, as well as the uh, battery management system, the inverter, and the control modules. So all of that is built in there. However, because it's a modular construction, it means that potentially one or at most two people are required to install it because no single component weighs more than 90 pounds. Whereas with the Tesla battery, which we'll see in a moment, the Tesla battery is completely, um, it's completely sealed and, and it weighs over 250 pounds. So there's no way you can, you can you know, ever attempt a single person install. You gotta have three people max to install a Tesla battery. And then the last thing I'll mention here is uh, the chemistry. So the, the Zonin Core battery uses the um, lithium iron phosphate chemistry, uh, which is considered by many to be a safer chemistry than the lithium NMC, which is the, the lithium nickel manganese cobalt, which we find in more electric vehicles. Now, 
I, I know there's a lot of talk out, out there, guys, that you know the, the, the lithium iron is safer than lith lithium ion. Um, I personally have not had any experience with, with a Tesla battery or a Tesla vehicle having any kind of safety issue with, with thermal runaway or combustion, but I figured I'd mention that because a lot of you are asking, and I know there are a lot of people that um, um, are concerned about this, this lithium iron phosphate chemistry as opposed to the traditional lithium ion. So the lithium iron phosphate chemistry is what the Zonin battery uses. However, I, I will say this is that one of the drawbacks with, with again, what's considered the, the safer of the two chemistries is that you don't, you don't get as much of that surge power, right? So a lot of that quick startup surge, which is, which is important for accelerating an electric vehicle or in a home backup environment for, for starting a large motor, like an air conditioning compressor, uh, the, the lithium iron phosphate chemistry is not as well suited as the more, more popular lithium NMC that are used in electric vehicle batteries. So that's the zone and core battery. All right, let's take a look at the Tesla Powerwall 2. Now the Tesla Powerwall 2 comes with a power rating of five kilowatts continuous power with surge power up to seven kilowatts. So it does have a slight advantage over the zone and battery here. Uh, that's gonna come in handy, especially if you're in a, in a rural, uh, rural area where you have a well pump motor that needs to be started as well as your traditional 120 volt things like refrigerators and computers and televisions. In terms of energy storage capacity, the Tesla Powerwall provides 13 and a half kilowatt hours energy storage. So compared to the zone and core battery, we're looking at 35% more energy stored. Uh, that may or may not be an issue for you if you're, if you're really conserving and really only running those critical things. But in terms of usable energy, the Tesla Powerwall 2 does provide for more storage capacity. In terms of the warranty, Tesla also offers a 10-year product warranty. Now, they'll tell you that they'll provide unlimited cycles if you're using it for a solar self-consumption and a storage application, which is, at least here on the East Coast, what most of our applications are. Um, however, for those of you who, are, who live in areas where you have large differences in on-peak rates and off-peak rates, and you wanna use the battery to avoid a high time of use uh, consumption rates, then the shorter cycle life uh, on the Tesla battery is, gonna, is really gonna, I think, come, come into factor here. Because according to Tesla's, uh, Tesla's warranty sheet, you're only gonna get 2,800 cycles out of the Powerwall 2 until you've reached the end of the warranty if you're using it in this uh, time of use avoidance mode. So you may have that warranty cut short before 10 years, depending on how many cycles you're doing per day to avoid purchasing peak power. So that's something to definitely be aware of here. Uh, in terms of cost, like I mentioned in the last section, uh, the Tesla battery itself is, is really the lowest cost battery out there, or it's, it's right on par with Zonin uh, core in terms of the cost of the battery itself. However, because it's a much heavier appliance and it's a fully integrated system, we can't really break this apart at all at the shop. This has to be delivered and installed as one complete appliance. And because it weighs 250 pounds, we have to have special equipment to help transport it and lift it into place. And you need three guys minimum to install this system. So in terms of cost of install, cost of labor, the Tesla Powerwall is the costlier uh, of the two products. And then in, in terms of X Factor, uh, I'm gonna give the Powerwall 2 two additional X Factor points. Uh, one, just because of the, uh, I, th I think the elegance and the sleekness of the design, uh, but also because of the tight integration with the Tesla app and other Tesla products. You know, I know that there are many Tesla vehicle owners out there that like the ability of using a single app to track and manage your, your vehicle and your home battery, and in, in some cases even telling, telling the, the battery when to allow the car to be charged as part of your overall time of use uh, avoidance strategy. So give uh, two additional points in this area. Another thing I should mention about the Powerwall 2 is that its AC power handling capacity in terms of solar input is also slightly higher than the zone and core battery. As I mentioned earlier, the zone and core battery can accept a maximum six kilowatts of AC input from an existing solar system, whereas the Powerwall 2 can accept up to 7.6 kilowatts 
of AC input. So if you have a larger solar PV system, chances are the Powerwall 2 will pair better with it than the zone and core battery. All right, so let's just look at a summary side by side for the two products. In terms of power, the Sonen Core battery offers 4.8 kilowatts continuous and a peak of 8.6 kilowatts, whereas the Powerwall 2 comes in at a slightly higher 5 kilowatts and 7 kilowatts peak power. In terms of energy storage capacity, the Sonen Core battery offers 10 kilowatt hours usable energy versus 13 and a half kilowatt hours with the Powerwall. Both products have a 10 year warranty, although depending on how you use the battery, the Tesla warranty may be limited to 2800 cycles doing time of use versus 10,000 cycles on the Zonin Core battery. In terms of cost, cost of equipment is roughly equivalent between the two, but because of the more lightweight modular design on the Zonin battery, uh, the overall cost to install is less because of the labor. And then again, giving two products, each plus two X-Factor points for some of the unique design features and chemistry. So if we total it up on the Sonin Core battery, we're getting three out of five for power, three out of five for capacity, five out of five for warranty. This is the best in class warranty of any other product in that category. Uh, five out of five for cost because of the lower equipment cost and lower labor requirement to get it installed and then plus two X-Factor points. On the Tesla side, we're gonna do four out of five for power and four out of five for storage capacity. Four out of five for the warranty because there is a slight limitation on the warranty if, if you're using it for a time of use strategy. Four out of five for the cost since it is a slightly higher labor requirement to install the Tesla battery. And then plus two X-Factor points for elegance of design and integration with the Tesla app. So folks, I'm going to have to declare this one a draw. And what I, what I really think this is going to come down to is what is your unique situation? Um, if you don't need the, that extra 200 watts of load handling capacity, the zone and core battery might be a much, much better solution for you, especially if you're planning on using the battery on a daily basis to uh, take advantage of that time of use metering uh, offset. However, if you're just using the battery for backup power purposes, then the Tesla may be a better choice for you because it does give you more power handling capability. It does give you 35% more energy storage capacity, which that, that could mean a, bi a big difference. And if you're in a total grid down event, that could be the difference of being able to keep your refrigerator on one more day if you, if you really had to conserve. You also probably want to consider if you're already a Tesla vehicle owner and you already have the Tesla app, is that something that you'd like to have the ability to manage your vehicle, your vehicle charging, and your home battery uh, all in a single platform. I know if it were me, knowing what I know now, I would probably go with, with the Tesla battery uh, for, my own, for my own personal use, uh, just because I think that overall the company and the trajectory of where they're going, uh, they've just got a great product and a great platform uh, that, that I think they're going to build upon as we get further and further into this energy revolution. However, if you prefer to have more of a tried and tested product that's already been exercised for over 10 years in the time of use management market, which is an even larger opportunity in Europe than it is here in the United States, then perhaps the zone and battery is for you. Well, folks, this has been a side-by-side -side comparison of the Zonin Core and the Tesla Powerwall 2 home backup batteries. Hey, folks, as always, if you're getting good value from the information we put out on the channel, make sure you hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button as well. It really helps us out a lot, and it, it forces YouTube and Rumble and the other platforms to show the video so that more people can see it. Well, folks, thanks for taking the time to tune in today. As always, I'm Joe Ordia, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.